So what are custom events and what can you do with them? As I mentioned, are really just designed to allow you to capture activity data that's unique to you. They provide you insights about how folks are engaging with your brand across different channels. A lot of the really common use cases are going to be from places like websites or apps, but they're actually going to be able to be used to capture data from anywhere through your tech stack, as long as that data kind of has a timestamp is really the, the kind of data that we're looking for. So why would someone use a, a custom event to track something instead of a, a custom property? What what makes it different than saying like, when was the last time someone logged in and storing that as a custom property? Yeah, there's uh, that's a, one of my favorite questions. We get that question a lot. Another version of that question we get is, why is this different from custom objects? And really the key to that is the amount of metadata that you can store about that thing, right? So if you just have a custom property that's on your contact object, let's say, that captures the last time that someone logged into your app, let's use that example. All you can really capture is that date time. You would then have to make another property for where in your app they were last logged into. You would then have to make another property to capture where they were logging in from. So it starts to kind of grow in a pretty crazy way. And imagine you have you know, five or six different channels that you're tracking user engagement on. You then now have 20 different custom properties that you're maintaining on your contact object. The other really big differentiator is that when a new thing occurs, those properties would get right. Those those object properties would get overwritten with the most current state of information. We have folks a lot of time want to track the history of a given object property. What they actually really need in that moment is an event that captures the thing that they're looking to track. Because then you can see it happened on this day, it happened on this day, it happened on this day, it happened on this day. And you can build reporting and segmentation and automation around the frequency and cadence of things happening. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And to like bring that into kind of the applicable is, for example, a while ago, almost 10 years ago now in my career, I was working for a company and we only stored that our customers would basically make an appointment. And we only stored the most recent appointment date as a contact field. So this is an example of how not to do it, is we stored this as most recent appointment date. And so it was very difficult then to act, take action on that data to say, you know, if we wanted to look at at scale, you know, how many times do people change their appointment, for example, we couldn't really do that. You could look at a record one by one and say, oh, Ryan, if I look into his property history, I can see he changed his appointment three times. But to be able to do that for multiple people, obviously, you can't really dig that deeply at scale. So events, like Maggie said, is a really good way to kind of measure these changes over time. Exactly. That is a perfect example of why events were sort of created. All right. So this is this is a big one that I know causes a lot of confusion. There are so many different types of events within HubSpot. There are custom events, there are timeline events, there are marketing events. That We are in a webinar right now, which is an event. So how do you differentiate these different types of, of events in HubSpot and how should you use them differently based on what that, that use case is? Another really stellar question and one that we definitely get a lot. It's it's interesting, the, the word event kind of means different things in different contexts, right? If you're talking to a marketer very specifically, the word event, the first thing that is going to come to mind is a conference or a trade show or something that someone attends in real life. The word event in this context is in the data sense of the word event. So, you know, developers or HubSpot admins that might be more familiar with tools like Amplitude, Segment or CD CDPs and product analytics tools tend to use this word event. And in that context, it really means a thing that occurs in a moment in time. And because we have both personas using HubSpot, right, both marketers and admins, developers, things like that, we actually kind of use the word in both contexts. And so it, it does require a little bit of dissecting what does it mean in this moment. The two instances that we use the word event in the sort of data context are custom events and timeline events. Custom events, as I mentioned, are for you as a customer to build out a piece of activity that is very unique to you and what you are looking to track across your various channels, right? 